Hey everybody, Mrs. Bianchi, we're looking at question number nine. The data set shows the number of books on each shelf of a bookshelf, and they give you these numbers, which happens when the outlier is removed, and they give us these four choices. So each one is talking about some measure of center, mean, mode, median. So we have to find all the measures of center, and we have to figure out what would they be if the outlier's in there, and what would it be with the outlier out? So by the way, what is an outlier? It's a number that's way off from the rest. It's much different than the rest of the numbers in the data set. So the number that I see that's way off from the rest is the number 30. So that would be the outlier. We're going to go ahead and find the mean, median, and mode with the number in there. And then we'll take the number out and we'll find the mean, median, and mode, and we'll compare and see which answer choice we'll pick. All right, so typically what you should do whenever you have to find all three measures of center, it's a good idea to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. So let's do that first. The lowest number in the set is a 10, so let's write that down first. And then we have a couple of 12s. Let's write the two 12s down. We have a couple of 15s. I see two of them, so let's put the two 15s down. We have a couple of 18s. And we have the number 30. All right, next, let's count the number of data points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna put that number over here. Data points, we have eight. And let's make sure we have all eight in what we wrote below. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that means we probably got all the numbers in our set. All right, so to find the mean, we have to find the sum of all the numbers. So let's do that first. And then we have to divide by how many there are, which in this case would be eight. So let's take out our calcu calculator and let's add up all the numbers. So I'm gonna add them using my blue numbers here. Actually, let's add them using the black numbers. 18 plus 15 plus 30 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18 plus 10 plus 12. And we get 130. Let's write that number down, 130. All right, so to get the average, we have to take 130, which is the sum, and divide it by how many data points there are, which is eight. And whatever this is, we're gonna put it in here. That's with, with the outlier in there. We're including the outlier, which in this case we're saying is 30. Let's take out our calculator. We already have 130 in there. We're gonna divide that by eight and we get this number. So we get 16 and 25 hundredths. All right, now if we take the outlier out, the outlier we're saying is 30. If we subtract 30 from this sum, then it would be 100. The sum would be 100. And we wouldn't be dividing by eight because then we would have seven values if we take this out. So imagine that that's gone. And if we do 100 divided by seven, 100 divide that by seven, we get this number. So let's round that to the nearest hundredth, 14 and let's say 29 hundredths. 14 and 29 hundredths. All right, now if we look at what they say about the mean, it says the median decreases by two. Now, if we had rounded this to the nearest tenth, then we might actually say that that's correct. But because um, th these values, if we actually subtracted these two things, we wouldn't get exactly two. We'd get a number close to it, but we wouldn't get exactly two. So for that reason, I don't really like that they, they have this as a choice in there because a lot of folks would round it. And if they rounded it, then they would say, oh, it does decrease by two, um, but it's not exact. All right, so let's move on to the median. If we, again, consider the idea that the 30 is there. And remember the median, you have to use the data set when they're ordered from least to greatest. Now, if we're including the 30, that means we have eight data points. And to find the midway point, we would have to take that number and divide it by two to get the midpoint, which would be four data points in. So if we count four data points on the low end, one, two, three, four, and count four data points on the high end, one, two, 
3, 4, then that means the midpoint would be right here where that purple line is. We have two numbers in the middle. So when we have two numbers in the middle, the protocol is to add the two numbers. And if we add 15 plus 15, that would equal 30. And then we find the average of these two numbers by dividing it by two. So basically, what are we doing? We're finding the average of these two numbers. Now, because the two numbers are the same, it should be mental math. I mean, of course, the average of 15 plus 15 would be the average of these two numbers would be 15. And if we did 30 divided by two, we would get 15. So the median with the outlier in there is 15. All right, now what if we took the 30 out? So let's visualize the 30 gone. We're crossing it out, it's not there anymore. So that means we have seven data points. So if we have seven data points and we take that and divide that by two, seven divided by two would be three and five tenths. When you have an odd number of data points, then we are going to use the whole number that we get for the quotient, and we're going to count that many in. So let's count in. I'll use yellow this time. One, two, three from the high end, and let's count from the low end. Now remember, 30 is gone. One, two, three from the high end, and then what's the number that's in the middle? It's 15. So that remained unchanged. 15 was the median when we included it in the data set, and it was also the median when we took it out. All right, so now let's move on to the mode, and then we'll go through each choice and see which answer choice we need to pick, because sometimes the wording can be a little tricky. All right, so the mode is the number that occurs most often. So let's examine if we leave the 30 in there as one of the data points. So I see a bunch of modes. We have the number 12, that's occurring twice. We have the number 15 occurring twice, and we have the number 18 occurring twice. So as it turns out, we actually have three modes when we include 30. So let's write all of them down. We have 12, we have 15, and we have 18. Now, if we took 30 out of the set, that doesn't change the fact that we have two occurrences of a 12, we have two occurrences of a 15 and two occurrences of, a, of an 18. So that would still be the mode if we took the outlier of 30 out. All right, so now let's look at our little organized chart here and go through each choice. So we already talked about the idea that the mean decreased by two. It was awfully close to two, but it wasn't exactly two. So that's not entirely true because, you know, that's if you round it maybe, but we're not rounding. All right, so the number of modes decreases to two. So we had we had three modes here, and we still had three modes. So that's not true. The median stays the same. So the median did stay the same, right? We got 15 with the outlier, and we got 15 without it. And then the median decreases by three. That's obviously not what happened. All right, now another thing I want to point out, and the reason why I don't like this question is um, I have a spreadsheet here. Let me find the spreadsheet. Here it is right here. What I did is I put the, um, the same numbers in a spreadsheet. And uh, I have, you know, the 30s in there. So what this spreadsheet does is I have a formula applied here that takes the, all the numbers that I put in and it uh, averages it. And then I also have it for median and for mode. This Usually spreadsheets don't work out for mode if you have more than one mode. So don't use spreadsheets for mode um, when that's true because um, this type of spreadsheet doesn't work. But I do, you know, I have the formula in there, but it, you know, it didn't identify the fact that there was more than one mode. But if I take the 30 out, watch what happens. If I delete that, see what happens. See, and it, it's rounded. Now, keep in mind, I'm just going to spread these out a little bit. You want to be careful when it comes to things that round. And sometimes if you want to increase the decimal on it, so you can increase or decrease the decimal, that can give you a, a clearer picture of things. So just the reason why I bring this up is because sometimes when you use spreadsheets, it can be a little bit misleading. In fact, when I did this, the first time I did this, I had this rounded to the nearest tenth. And it led, it led me to believe that answer choice A was actually correct when it's really not quite right. And I really don't think it's fair for the textbook company to even have, um, you know, that in there as a choice. You know, they probably should have picked a different number um, that wouldn't round to that. So just be careful with stuff like that. 